Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing hemostasis. Okay, so the final topic then that I want to discuss in this video on hemostasis is the topic of fibrinolysis, which means the breakdown of fibrin. Now, fibrinolysis is actually going to lead to the entire breakdown of the blood clot, whether physiological or pathological, because it is the fibrin mesh fundamentally that holds the uh, blood clot together. The actual cross links between platelets are very weak and if you were to break down the fibrin mesh then the platelets would start to fall apart. So by breaking down the fibrin mesh, which is what fibrinolysis is all about, we are going to dismantle our blood clot. Okay, so let me firstly put this in context. So. If we've got a physiological blood clot, a hemostatic plug that is uh, plugging a hole in the side of a blood vessel, then why would we want to dismantle that? Well, that's not a permanent solution to the problem. That is a temporary solution to the problem. Of course, what we're going to want to do is repair the hole in the side of the blood vessel, and we're going to gradually want to dismantle the blood clot that is the temporary solution to the problem in order that we can actually build the new tissue that's going to fill in the hole. Okay, so we will want to gradually dismantle uh, the physiological blood clot in the side of a blood vessel wall. If we're talking about a pathological blood clot, then of course we'll want to dismantle it. Um, so we need a mechanism for dismantling the fibrin mesh so that uh, we can dismantle the blood clot. Okay, so that's the reason then that the body has a mechanism for dismantling blood clots, both physiological and pathological. And as I say, the way of doing it is simply to break down the fibrin mesh and then the thing will fall apart. Okay, so firstly then let me give you the overview and then we'll go into a few more of the details. Okay, so the breakdown of fibrin then is going to be catalyzed by an enzyme called plasmin. And the inactive version of plasmin, called plasminogen, is circulating in the blood and is produced and released into the blood by the liver. So again, everything starts off with the liver. So the liver produces the inactive version of the enzyme that will break down the fibrin mesh of a blood clot. And this is known as plasminogen. Okay, so circulating in the blood all the time then, we have this inactive version of this enzyme, which is called plasminogen. Then, at the site where we have a blood clot, either physiological or pathological, certain things can then trigger the plasminogen to convert into plasmin, okay, which is the active form. And this active form will then uh, be exposed to the fibrin mesh of the outer portion of the blood clot, whether physiological or pathological, and will then start actually breaking down the fibrin molecules and therefore uh, decomposing the uh, blood clot. Okay, so what we need to understand then is how do we convert plasminogen to plasmin? How is that change um, brought about? What coordinates the change from plasminogen to plasmin? Well, the things which activate plasminogen in the blood to convert into plasmin, which will then start breaking down the fibrin molecules, are called plasminogen activators. Okay, and for short, plasminogen activators are just written PAs. Now, there are two main forms of plasminogen activators. One is called tissue plasminogen activator, and is for short written TPA, so the T here is for tissue plasminogen activator. And then the other is called urokinase plasminogen activator, okay, and therefore is written UPA, like so. So these are the two different types of plasminogen activator, tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, and urokinase plasminogen activator, UPA. And both of these uh, molecules are capable of catalyzing the conversion of plasminogen in the blood to plasmin, and the plasmin will then attack the outer portion of your blood clot. So the question then is where is tissue plasminogen activator going to come from and where is urokinase plasminogen activator going to come from? Okay, so we'll start with tissue plasminogen activator because this is an easier one. Endothelial cells in the bloodstream release tissue plasminogen activator. So if we have our endothelial cell here, it will be releasing tissue plasminogen activator. And this is another way of endothelial cells making sure that 
any thrombi are cleared from the bloodstream okay, by releasing tissue plasminogen activator, which will then activate plasminogen to plasmin to break down any thrombi, pathological blood clots that you have in the bloodstream. In addition, if you've got a physiological blood clot in the side of your blood vessel, in a hole in the side of your blood vessel, then the endothelial cells will gradually release tissue plasminogen activator in the vicinity of this. That will be activating plasminogen into plasmin, which will then be gradually degrading the outer portion of that physiological blood clot so that uh, we can gradually repair the tissue, build new tissue to fill in the gap. So we'll gradually be dismantling our physiological blood clot. Okay, so endothelial cells then are the source for tissue plasminogen activator, which will activate plasminogen into plasmin. And I've explained now how this is relevant to both physiological and pathological blood clots. Now, urokinase plasminogen activator, slightly more complicated story. The liver produces urokinase plasminogen activator, okay, and puts it into the bloodstream. However, urokinase plasminogen activator is not activated until it binds to a receptor on the surface of the endothelial cells, which is known as the urokinase plasminogen activator receptor. Okay, so this receptor on the surface of endothelial cells, this is called the urokinase plasminogen activator receptor, which for short I'll just abbreviate to UPAR here. Okay, so this is the urokinase plasminogen activator receptor. And then urokinase plasminogen activator molecules combines to the urokinase plasminogen activator receptor molecules and then will actually become activated. So once they bound to their receptor, they will then become activated and will be able to um, act on the plasminogen molecules and convert them to plasmin molecules. And again then, at the site where the blood clot is, the urokinase plasminogen activator molecules will be activating plasminogen to plasmin and you'll be getting degradation of these fibrin molecules of the fibrin mesh uh, down so that the whole blood clot is degraded. Okay, so these are the two then plasminogen activators, tissue plasminogen activator and urokinase plasminogen activator. Tissue plasminogen activator is just released by endothelial cells. Urokinase plasminogen activator is released by the liver, but then to actually function, it must bind to the urokinase plasminogen activator receptor, uh, which is on endothelial cells. Okay, so everything comes down to endothelial cells then with the initiation of the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin, and therefore the initiation of fibrinolysis. Okay, so this then is how we dismantle blood clots and initiate the dismantling of blood clots. So, here then now we are ending this video on hemostasis. This is the end of the hemostasis video. There is going to be a follow-on video which will uh, just continue straight on from this, which will be entitled Anticoagulants and Thrombolytics, where we'll go over the exogenous pharmacology, so drugs that have an anticoagulant effect prevent uh, coagulation with the aim of, of course, preventing pathological um, blood clots from forming thrombosis. Uh, and we'll also be looking at thrombolytics there, which are the drugs that can promote fibrinolysis. So if you know that you've got a patient who has a thrombus that's blocking some blood vessel in potentially the heart or the brain, then you can give a thrombolytic to break down that blood clot. Okay, uh, so as I say, that video will follow on and it will also be in the playlist on the cardiovascular system entitled Anticoagulants and Thrombolytics.